Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to teach you how to take your AEM gauges to the next level and log it via AEM net to devices such as an AQ1, CD7, CD5, or any other device that has AEM net on it. So the purpose of this video is basically to make it so that you can take your AEM gauges like I have now and hook them into the AEM net. Some of the gauges don't actually have the pinouts set up on the actual connector. Although they have the ability to emit AEM net, they don't actually have the pin set up within the connector itself. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then how to connect it to AEM net so it can be then recorded via your device, like in my case, my AQ1. So you can get this all set up, all wired up, ready to go, and be logging in a heartbeat. Now I just want to share with you some of the key devices we're going to be using today in our video. Some of our DTM connectors, pins from DigiKey, this is actually a part provided by AEM and it's the terminator for the end of the AEM net setup, and the AEM net adapters, which this makes it really easy just to add new devices, lickety split. One thing to notice, I left my wires relatively long for my airfield ratio gauge because I knew I was going to come back to this and do this. Um, but basically, I have this, and this is actually already connected to AEM net. So now I'm just going to add the other two gauges into AEM net. So now I'm going to disconnect the gauge. So now I'm disconnecting the gauge so that I can easily actually work with it. So if you're looking at the connector for the back of the gauge, if you'll be looking at it from the back with the pin, the, the clip up, you're going to be looking at that and that's going to be on pins 3 and 4, 3 being your can low, 4 being your can high. As you can see here, this is the existing AEM net setup. I only did uh, 2 because I, at the time I was only doing the wideband, which the wideband they generally say to not hook it in to the power from like your AQ1 or something like that to pick a standalone. Uh, power source but when I do this I'm gonna actually wire it up so that I have all four obviously in this situation I'm using a piece of wire that has four conductors in it that way I can have all four so you'll have can high can low uh, ground and your 12 volt source so it actually can power your gauges at the same time also for reference AM net is generally white and green, white being can high, green being can low. So these are pretty reusable. It's actually pretty nice. I can actually deep in this and then I can hold this for later. So as a quick reference with the connector itself, they actually send you this. So that's telling you which pins they go to what, and can high, can low, power, ground, all everything you need to know about what this guy is actually doing and how it's doing it. So now that we have our wire in place next to our gauge wiring, now we can go ahead and strip it back. We're going to put the other pin on, and then we're going to push it into place within the existing wiring uh, loom. So now what we're doing is we're stripping back the wires so that we can actually connect them into the connector of the gauge. For this we're going to be using the DigiKey connectors that we ordered. They're absolutely tiny, obviously, to go in a little tiny spot. Now, you might notice that I'm not quite using the correct crimp tool for this. Um, I had it and it appears to have gone missing. So, I'm kind of doing this the old ghetto blaster way. You just have to be very careful when you're doing this. You're actually trying to crimp one on the actual wire itself and the other on the insulation. Now, if you're a professional like me, you can get this accomplished with some needle nose pliers. If you're not, I highly recommend getting the correct crimp tool and doing this correctly. 
one thing to make sure to do, the tug test. If you can pull it off, it's not going to stay. So get it right, make sure you can do the tug test, then you can place it. Okay, so now our new AEM net wires are routed into our existing plug that went to our existing oil pressure gauge. So now we're just going to plug our oil pressure gauge like it was before, and then we're going to come down here, and then I'm going to show you how to hook up all the extra AEM net connectors. Okay, so now we got all our connections done, our gauges are back in. We have all the connectors connected up in the gauges themselves with the pins now pinned into the original connectors. So now what we have is we have our AEM net connectors, DTM connectors here, our AEM DT connectors here, and then we have our resistor for the end. So our resistor is going to go after our oil temperature gauge. So I'm going to plug that in there, and that indicates the end of the circuit. Then, our oil pressure gauge actually is going to feed out of the oil pressure gauge into the oil temperature gauge. This is then going to be fed by the wide band itself, and the wide band is going to be connected to the AQ1. Now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take my AEM net connection, that actually goes to the AQ1 and I'm going to take my connection here that actually goes to the wideband get them connected and then we'll be good to go okay so we're about to finish the car up James came over to save my ass with a, a crimp tool so now we can actually crimp the DTM connector pins so now we can get this done so so now the last thing we have to do is hook up the DTM connectors from the AQ1 to our harness, and then our harness to our wideband, and then we'll be all hooked up. So now I'm gonna read off the, the pin out here, provided by AEM. Make sure that I'm doing it right, because you never know when you forget, and then go from there. So DTM connectors as a whole, yeah. very, very simple, obviously. So now we've crimped our wire, or we've crimped our pins, or sockets. Sockets onto the wire itself, onto each individual strand. Now you're just ensuring that your pinout is correct. So I have black, red, white, and green. And if I look at my handy dandy thing over here, so pin one is white, pin two is green, pin three is red, pin four is black. So that is correct. Everything is A-OK. -okay. So now we're gonna slide this into our thing here and you'll hear it all four of them snap which is a good thing in this case because now we can put that in there and then we shove this little guy into here which locks it all into place with that all locked into place now we can take this and happy-go-lucky plug this in here and now our wideband is almost connected because now I have to actually connect the wideband because that was actually the AQ1 connecting to everything else. So once we connect these four wires and those two wires, then and then only will we be done. So what we were using before is we were using these sockets here to create this connection here, this connection here which is our AQ1 connection feeding from the AQ1 to the harness. Now these are all the Y harnesses that AEM, that AEM sells that you can pick up and basically we're just making all of these connect all these gauges in AEM net to make it kind of easier so that we can actually read everything as a whole, kind of simplifies it, makes it pretty easy. The DTM connector is pretty easy as a set and uh, now we're just going to get on to the male DTM connector and then we'll go from there. Here's the female pin. Oh. So as you can see, we're using this badass tool that James brought over, which makes this super awesome and precise. They do sell way cheaper versions that you can get. You can get kits that incorporate them into it. 
This is the way to go if you plan to do a lot of wiring. If you plan to do just a little bit, you can get away with the cheaper stuff a lot. So on this one, even though I'm actually going to be using a four, I'm only gonna be using two because the power is already set for the wideband. So now we're actually on to the last bit of our integration of the gauges data into the data logger. So now I have the gauges turned on so that they actually can read something. And then I have the data logger turned on. And now I'm going to go into the AQ1 software and I'm going to auto discover to see if it picks up all the gauges. So now I've got the auto discover feature clicked, which is simple as going into your AEM net devices here and then going into auto discover here. Now it says the following AEM net the following AEM devices have been discovered and it shows the X-Series AFR, the AEM water temperature gauge, and AEM oil pressure gauge. And this will now currently be automatically configured into your system. So now I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. So now with this you can see I have an oil pressure gauge, I have the water temperature, and then I have my AFR still. Um, all of these are now reading with the scalars, it's in Celsius, so eventually we'll have to go in here and uh, we'll be looking at changing all these things so that they uh, read how we want to uh, in AM data. And so, there we go. Quick, pretty easy, as long as you have the right tools for the job. And now I'm able to log all these different multiple items. And still, I think I'm gonna add one more thing later on and it's gonna be the RPMs out of the tack. So I'm going to add that. That's going to be done via a uh, analog channel, which will be slightly different. Still pretty easy overall, but not using AEM net. But AEM net is definitely the way to go when it comes to this. Uh, if you can set up anything to, to utilize CAN bus or AEM net, I highly recommend it. All right, guys, that's it. Take care. Just to give you an idea, here you can see the live data that it is being displayed on the AQ1 data acquisition system software. This way you can verify your data looks good prior to it actually being data logged. Obviously in these units here, uh, it's a little bit harder to understand, but we'll be able to convert that once we get into the uh, other software. Okay, so here we have the data log that I took from the track day that I did the other day at Streets of Willow. As you can see, now I have my air fuel ratio, my GPS speed, and now importantly my oil temperature and my oil pressure. So these are the two gauges that I added recently. Obviously I also had to integrate the air fuel ratio in with the wiring, but it was already there previously. But you can see now bringing it into AEM data, now I'm able to look through the log and I can watch my oil pressure based on ground speed which isn't exactly ideal. I'd rather have it be versus the, the rev counter, which that's why I want to integrate the rev counter at a later time. But I can also look at my oil temperatures, which is great to look over the entirety of the run. I can actually look in this session here, which was 13 minutes and 20 seconds, and the highest oil, uh, pre oil temperature that I got to was 232, which just by the blink of my eye looking over at the gauge from around last year, I had 280 plus, but that was prior to putting a oil, uh, oil cooler on the car. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was mainly so that I could log my oil temperatures and see if there's any, um, anything else that I need to address. Another thing that would probably be ideal in this situation is also to to wire in the, the water temperatures. This was on a very hot day, guys, uh, probably around 95 degrees to 105 degrees, and my water temps were actually spiking pretty heavily on my Miata, which is indicative of a car that doesn't have a, uh, a coolant reroute. So that's gonna be next on the agenda, but I'd also like to log the water temps as well, just because then we're able to actually see uh, a lot more correlations between the different temperatures and what they're doing. Overall, the data is going to help me out and let me kind of start altering my air fuel ratio with my aeromotive uh, fuel pressure regulator. So I'm going to start tweaking that a little bit more. As you can see here, it's still 11.5 to 1 as I climb here. 
and you can kind of see it's tapering in the downward adding more fuel as we go through getting close to about 11.2 um, I actually leaned it out just a little bit while I was at the track because the last log I looked at it was in the tens so it looks like I still have a little bit more to go and uh, maybe I can get a little bit more power up top to help me out on the long straightaways alright guys that's about it Thank <laughs> you.